Um, OK, can everyone see this? My uh, screen share here? OK, I'm getting some thumbs yes. up. We're good. All right, so um, as uh, Andres so kindly introduced me, I'm uh, Tyler Julian, uh, one of the more recent maintainers on the project. Um, I've been working on it for probably the last year, year and a half. I'm a software engineer on the security team at Uber. Um, I'm going to be going over Spire, kind of what we've been working on, what we're going to be working on, and then Andrew's going to be talking about um, kind of looking forward in the future and some of the big projects we have coming up. So uh, the last time we spoke, uh, back in October for the last community day, um, we've put out five releases, um, 14 major features, a little over 200 merged pull requests, and uh, had 23 uh, unique contributors. So really cool. This project's continuing to grow. Um, and that's really exciting. Um, let's see here. So uh, what did we spend time on? Uh, user and operator quality of life. When we're talking about users and operators, these are the, the infrastructure folks generally who install Spire into their infrastructure. We want the, the system to be easy to understand and easy to debug. Uh, easy to debug, hopefully in the time you can hold your breath, um, I think is a pretty good goal. And um, we, we worked on a lot of, uh, of those types of things over the last six months. Improved resiliency performance, uh, making sure that the agent and the spire, uh, the agent and the server um, are sort of working well together. If one crashes, the other is handling it sort of gracefully. Uh, and, and generally performance, you know, how does this system look when you start to scale up to hundreds and thousands of agents? You start to add more servers and that sort of thing. And so a lot of uh, really good work was done on the performance side. Um, and then one of the big ones was Nested Spire. So Nested Spire has been around um, for a bit. Um, and I actually remember at the last, I think, KubeCon back in November, um, talking to some folks about, oh, how does Nested Spire work with the Jot SVID? Because right now it's, it's not quite there. And this is sort of just in the ideation phase back in November. And, and actually we, we shipped this with 0.10. Uh, so it's really cool to see that um, come full circle in just the last couple of months. Um, what we're currently spending some time on, uh, Andres talked about this a little bit, but improving the server APIs uh, kind of in preparation for 1.0 um, and, and project procedures, which is maybe not the most exciting thing, but um, <clears throat> seeing things like maintainership guidelines, governance, uh, release procedures, how version releases are, are handled, um, all those things point to signs of a really growing and, and maturing project. So it's been really cool to see. Uh, when we last spoke, uh, 0.9, which is just about to be released, we released it in November um, with one of the, the big things, which is mixed version compatibility guarantees. So now we just released 0.10, uh, and you can rest easy knowing that if you release the, um, the server of uh, 0.10, it can still interoperate with the agents uh, running 0.9. Um, and so those sorts of things are also really important for a mature project like this. Uh, we also implemented uh, OpenID Connect provider discovery support allowing Spire to interoperate with some of the existing auth standards out there. Uh, the ability to use the AWS private CA as an upstream CA. Again, working more towards this like secure by default. How do we make this less of an expert system? Oh, we'll provide people with the ability to use kind of existing AWS tooling. Telemetry and logging standardization. Um, this is another step in, in just ease of, of debugging, you know, kind of exactly what your metrics are, are being emitted and, and the logging makes sense. Um, and su server support for more CA key types. Um, so that was a, a, a pretty big uh, release back in November. And since then, we had a few uh, minor point releases. Um, one was actually a pretty significant change, which was to reduce the load on the database. Um, Matt McFerrin from Square brought this up. Um, and Andrew did a ton of work to, to, to focus on this over the last couple of uh, weeks and months. Um, GCS bucket backend for pushing trust bundles. Uh, this is sort of towards some of the federation work um, and implementing some of that uh, trust bundle specs that um, we were talking about earlier. And um, let's see what else. Oh, the SQL data store being able to read from uh, DB replicas. So this is nice from a, um, a, scale, a horizontal scaling perspective. Uh, instead of just having a single database, um, that your server is, is reading from, you can actually scale out to a number of replicas. Uh, and better, more informative logging, again, that, that quality of life. And so uh, I think one of the more exciting things uh, is 0.10 that was just released, uh, in fact, this week or last week. 
Um, and what we had, what we added was support for Jot SBID uh, in Nested Spire, which was huge. Um, and I mentioned this earlier. We've been talking about it for for months, and uh, a ton of work went into to place to uh, make this happen. Um, and, and one of the the more difficult areas here, of, of course, is the fact that X509 has chaining built into the protocol. Um, if you have a you know a top level CA, you can have an intermediate and then and some leaves. And so the idea of nested spire works quite well. Um, but with Jots, you sort of just have an issuer. Um, and so getting that to play well with the spire topology uh, took a significant amount of work. Better configuration. Um, so allowing users to template in environment variables uh, into the um, agent and server config files uh, and the ability to validate the, uh, those config files. Um, so you have some confidence before you ship it to prod. Uh, agents are now proactively picking up registration changes. Uh, things like, you know, when uh, you change the DNS name on a registration entry, it'll uh, propagate to the agents a little quicker. Um, so those are kind of just nice quality of life things that really make the, the system feel tight and, and reactive. <laughs> and this registration create if not exist. I feel like uh, some people have been asking for this for a while and, and we finally put it in. Uh, it's just cool to see. It's, uh, uh, it's, a bit of, it's a bit of a smell, but it actually is making it into our, our V2 APIs. Uh, so I know some people were excited about that one. So I thought I'd throw it in. Um, what else here? And, and one of the big things kind of on the Spire internal is we have this idea of an upstream authority um, as opposed to uh, an upstream CA. Uh, upstream CA is, of course, going to continue to work through a, a deprecation period. Um, but uh, upstream authority is this kind of new interface that allows for the nested Spire uh, to work quite well. It allows pushing um, trust bundle information up through the, the nested topology. And uh, we'll, we'll leave some time for, for questions at the end of this, um, if you guys have any uh, questions about some of these features. So uh, Spire on the horizon, I'm actually gonna pass this over to Andrew to talk a little bit more about what we have coming up in the future and um, some of the other library work that we've been doing. So Andrew. Let's see, and if you're talking Andrew, we can't hear you. Eric, can you hear me now? Sorry. Yeah. 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 We can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can you see the window? Yep. Okay. Yep. Let me go to present here. Did that work okay? Can you still Perfect. see it? Okay. All right. So, uh, Andrew Harding here. Um, been a Spire maintainer for a couple of years now. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about what we've got going on the horizon. Um, and then about some work that we've we've been uh, overtaking over the past few weeks that, that we're excited to share. Um, so again, just to recap, we've talked about this a few times now, but uh, we're, we're redoing the server APIs on the Spire server. And um, just to give some background here, right now there are two major API services uh, inside Spire server. There's the registration API, which is kind of your administrative API. It's how you register workloads and um, you know manage attested agents, et cetera. And then there's this node API, um, which is primarily used by agents to um, attest into the system and to obtain authorized entry information and to, more, most importantly, um, rotate and maintain uh, workload SVIDs. Um, those two APIs have grown over time uh, pretty organically. Uh, there's, you know, as new use cases and new features have been put into Spire, we've just kind of, you know, tossed them into whichever of those two APIs they, they generally fit into. Um, and you know, over time, that that uh, those two API services have kind of smelled, started to smell a little bit. And so we we've been uh, planning to undertake this for a while, and and a few months ago decided that you know now was the right time as we uh, prepare to 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 move towards 1.0 uh, to get those uh, APIs um, cleaned up a little bit and um, and simplified and and uh, take the opportunity to sub apply some consistent patterns in those. And so. You know, we've, we've uh, undergone some design work over the past little bit to, to break those out, um, to make those uh, APIs very single purpose and um, easy and applied some, you know, consistent patterns around like pagination and things like that. Um, so over the next few weeks, so uh, we hope to get that design out and solicit some more feedback from the community and, and then start on that work. And, and over the next weeks and, and you know, month or two, uh, we hope to put a lot of that in place. 
Um, the next uh, big ticket item is uh, around trust revocation. So this is kind of the next um, big piece that we want to put into Spire uh, to improve our security posture. And, and that's the idea that, um, you know, at a moment's notice, you can proactively revoke a CA or even an individual um, SVID uh, from the system and have that revocation propagate down smoothly through the infrastructure, uh, you know, in, in case there's been some sort of breach or, or potential loss of a private key. Um, and so that's that's a big ticket item that's going to take some careful consideration and, and we're just in the design uh, phase for that. Uh, Andres uh, talked upon this briefly, but we're also uh, considering uh, design for a break glass mode and just kind of set the stage here. Um, if you have some sort of event happen in your deployment that is preventing rotation from happening, for example, you know, you have an upstream authority configured and your Spire servers um, lose connectivity to the upstream authority for a long enough time that you're starting to, uh, to fear that they're not going to be able to rotate their intermediate CAs in time before those CAs expire. Um, if those CAs do expire today, then uh, all of your agents, um, you know, all the SVIDs inside your deployment are also going to be expiring because that chain of trust is now, is now ex uh, wholly expired and connectivity starts breaking down between agents and servers. And at the point where you fix this, um, you know, this breakage and Spire servers are able to start rotating again, unfortunately, at that point, your agents in order to get back into the system have to reattest, which is a pretty, pretty large burden. Um, so the idea is that Spire gains the, the smarts to uh, inform operators when you're going to get into the situation. You know, we proactively detect that, hey, we haven't been able to rotate in time, things are gonna start falling over, you know, consider breaking the glass on the alarm. And so operators are, are going to be empowered to, to break that glass, pull the alarm um, and have the infrastructure um, tolerate expired certificates for a period of time while they, uh, you know, get the, uh, get the, the um, Spire deployment back on its feet and Spire servers are able to start rotating again. And, um, and then at some point in the future, as the, uh, as Spire servers start to determine that things are healthy again and that agents are back rotating and, and um, are attested with, uh, um, Unexpired certificates, you know, allow the operators to, to get out of that mode and, and get back to a more secure posture. Um, so that's it for the for the future. Like we believe fully that those three things are going to keep us busy for quite a, a bit of time. Um, now I'd like to talk about what we've been doing over the past uh, couple months um, in terms of uh, something Andres touched on um, in regards to um, you know, convenience libraries for consuming Spiffy and for doing Spiffy-like things. Uh, we have a, a Spiffy library for doing stuff in the Go programming language. Um, there's been a, a V1 library for quite some time. Um, it's starting to show its age. Um, in the beginning, it was, you know, just a couple of uh, utility functions um, for, for, uh, for example, pulling Spiffy IDs out of certificates. Um, it's grown over time and, and we got support for like a, a, a workload API kind of high level client um, and some uh, convenient stuff for establishing mutual TLS between, you know, two peers using credentials and, and authentication material provided by that workload API. Um, it's somewhat inflexible if, if you kind of step outside the, uh, the norm on what it can provide. It doesn't give you uh, the building blocks to go off and, and do something a little bit different. Um, and it's missing key functionality for uh, federation support, for example, and uh, JOT SVID support. So we started to address these things, and, and when we when we uh, you know started started trying to add some of these things and improve the documentation, et cetera, uh, it became clear to us that it was probably time for a, a refresh on that. And so um, we started a V2 version of that library uh, a little bit back. We designed it from first principles to provide you know these low and high level interfaces. Um, at the high level interfaces, you know, we want to enable you to do turnkey Spiffy mutual TLS between, you know, two peers. We want to do turnkey federation. So you can just kind of, you know, start up your, your, your uh, uh, control plane and have it, uh, you know, very quickly and easily with a little teeny amount of code go out and start pulling trust domain, or sorry, pull bundle information from foreign trust domains that you, you're federating with. A um, bunch of, um, rudimentary stuff around bundle management, um, Spiffy IDs, you know, parsing, validating, um, using those Spiffy IDs in a, in a type safe way, um, SVID verification, all of that stuff. And so um, 
before we jump into what's left, let me just take a quick diversion here and uh, I'll show you hopefully the documentation there. Can everyone see that? We good? Yep, we can. Okay, awesome. So uh, we've published an, an alpha release of, um, of the Ghost Spiffy V2 library under this Go module. Um, following, uh, you know, Go module best practices, we've, it's now under this import path uh, with the V2 on the end. And um, at a high level here, here are some of the packages that, that we provide. So we've got, you know, these bundle related packages for, um, you know, bundle material of different, uh, different types. So, so JOT bundle holds a JOT authentication material for authenticating JOT SVIDs. Same thing for X509 bundles and X509 SVIDs. The Spiffy bundle package provides um, current specification uh, a conformant uh, implementation of the Spiffy bundle that, um, that Justin talked about. Um, and you can see right here, we have a, a federation package. Uh, this provides, you know, again, turnkey functions for obtaining bundles from foreign trust domains or for watching for bundle updates from foreign trust domains. We've got a little handler if you want to serve a bundle inside, you know, from your control plane. Here's a, a little handler that plugs into the Go HTTP stack to serve that out um, conveniently. Um, we've got at the very bottom here, a high level workload API client, uh, which provides inside this package, you know, some one shot functions for doing quick operations against the workload API to obtain SVIDs or authentication material, as well as some, some uh, more rich uh, constructs um, for more long-term operations with the workload API. Um, We've got this Spiffy TLS package, which leverages that workload API client um, and provides, you know, some very convenient ways of establishing MTLS with, with other Spiffy peers. Um, whether the both sides are Spiffy or one side is Spiffy and the other side is WebPKI or, you know, and, and some combination in between. And then, uh, you know, again, like I said, some convenience around um, handling and verifying and parsing and loading JOT SVIDs and X509 SVIDs. Um, you know, here's the Spiffy ID package that provides, you know, convenience, strongly typed uh, objects for Spiffy IDs and for trust domain names within those Spiffy IDs. Um, and so we, we kind of feel that, you know, this is a good a step in the right direction for a, a clear and, and easy, convenient way to do Spiffy operations. Um, we've got a few things left to do. Uh, for example, uh, Got some more documentation to fill out on that before we make a, 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 an official release. Um, some unit testing that's still underway that we're hoping to wrap up in the next week or so. Um, we're going to add a ton of examples to show how to use this library under a variety of circumstances. You know, for, for doing federation, for um, you know, using this library with gRPC and with HTTP, etc. Um, and right now we don't have, but we plan to have the same sort of like high level package um, that we have for TLS, uh, the same sort of thing uh, applied to both gRPC and HTTP. So that, you know, um, you know, spinning up a gRPC server, or a gRPC client that's um, backed and powered by the Spiffy workload API to provide authentication, you know, between those two peers is, is as convenient and easy as possible. So that is what I've got. Uh, are you ready for questions now, Umair? Uh Yes, um, I think if you have any questions for Justin, Tyler, uh, Andrew, uh, feel free to put them in the chat window and then we can unmute yourself. I know Justin, there was a question already uh, for you. Do you wanna add any commentary around it? I know you already pasted that response. Yeah, I think, um... So you're referring to Cesar's question. Um, so Cesar asked um, whether or not there was um, a way for whether or not the specification um, spelled out how to authenticate the API provider while fetching the, the uh, trust bundle. And just want to clarify that um, that fetching of the trust bundle definitely is authenticated. And this um, goes back to the, the concept of, of profiles. So um, using perhaps the more familiar uh, profile, HTTPS, um, when we fetch a uh, endpoint, um, or when we fetch the trust bundle from the endpoint, the endpoint is a URL, and the URL um, is, is 
going to be authenticated using standard web PKI techniques using standard, uh, commonly available uh, root certificates. Okay. Um, if there are additional questions to that, um, any follow-up questions or um, requests for clarifications, I'm happy to uh, to engage with folks either in the um, the group chat or in the Spiffy uh, Slack. Great, thank you, Justin. Uh, any other questions, folks? Wow, a quite bunch today. Maybe everyone's checking email. <laughs> uh no no problem a any closing remarks uh tyler andrew but if you guys have any questions in between they can always put it in the chat window and you guys can answer there any closing yeah, remarks no, i just like to to quickly um you know thank everybody who's uh contributed to inspired project over you know the the past couple of years and you know we've had some great community response and engagement um you know opening issues and and calling out problems so that we can you know Get on fixes really quickly and and uh you know obviously code contributions that have pushed the the project forward and move things along and it's it's just great to have have people um contributing so thank you great thank you um Mayor, we have an additional have... question we have an additional question from peter manster are there any okay. existing or planned integrations between envoy and spire andrew you want to take that one yeah andrew uh, so, uh, currently we have, uh, we integrate with Envoy, um, through the, uh, SDS, the secret discovery service, um, API that Envoy consumes. So Spire agents implement SDS and Envoy can obtain certificates and validation contexts from Spire, uh, over that API. So that's an existing integration that we have. Uh, we don't have anything else immediately planned for, um, for interactions between Envoy and Spire, other than um, making that uh, SDS implementation a, a little more convenient. For example, uh, right now it requires some very specific configuration. And um, you know, if you want to um, use this for Istio, for example, uh, it's a little opinionated on, on the names of the validation context and certificates that it pulls uh, through SDS. And so making that a little bit more convenient to consume from an Aspire agent um, is something that we were considering. Uh, also, in relation to the break glass mode, I didn't talk about this um, in too much detail, but you know, we're, we're, we can solve the problem for Spire infrastructure, like trust between Spire agent and Spire server. Um, but when you get into that break glass situation and um, workloads are in a position where they are not going to be able to authenticate each other because of expired certificates, um, there's not a whole lot we can do um, through uh, the Spiffy Workload API um, uh, surface. And so because Spire Agent specifically implements SDS, we can potentially in that break glass mode educate Envoy that we're in that mode and that it should um, not uh, check for expiration on certificates when it's doing its authentication for that, you know, while we're in that mode. And that's something that already exists in Envoy that we can already provide through the validation context. Um, and so that's that's a consideration that we're we're making when designing break glass mode. Great. Um, I think there's another question there. Um, are there any plans to add the ability for connectors in Spire? I... Dennis, perhaps can you elaborate further? Yeah, on that connector? <laughs> uh, sure. So, um, Cytel Enterprise has a concept of connectors so that you can authenticate with other things um, as opposed to just the standard um, authenticate two mechanisms that exist. Um, that allows people to integrate with sort of enterprise-y authentication mechanisms that they may have. Uh, is that concept or is there any plans to add that concept into the open source project? Maybe I'll, I'll take that one, Harding. Okay, go ahead. So it's something on our radar. We have not prioritized it yet. If it's something you're interested in, we would love to uh, gather additional detail around the, the use cases you're looking to solve and something where we're happy to pull the rest of the community uh, for feedback as well. 